All right, today we're gonna tear down an Xbox One controller. I had recently put paddles for A and B on the bottom of an Xbox One controller and found out from the gaming community that there's not a good teardown video yet. So I figured I would do my part and give back a little bit. Not I wanted to put a new LED in this controller I got anyways. So stock, you can see the light just comes up white. We're gonna go ahead and change that out to blue. So you just take off the battery in the battery pack, get a pry bar, and you want to pry up these edges here on the side since they're going to this overall kind of a screwless design. So you slide your pry bar, you'll feel the clip start to come apart. the first time someone gets mad playing Call of Duty this is going to turn into a Mr. Potato Head of a controller getting thrown against the ground. So get one off and then you go and you get the other one. It's my first Xbox YouTube video, so I wanted to try to put my Nikon camera on a tripod and do it. We'll see how it turns out. Alright, those just snap right off. Once you do that, that'll expose your screw holes around the side and of course I always put one under the paper back here so we just take it's a normal security torque that they use on the old controllers go and you pull those out actually extremely simple as far as taking them apart. Changing out thumbsticks in the future are going to be extremely easy. If you check out my Facebook page, you can see where I already put PlayStation 3 style thumbsticks on that controller that I put the paddles on. So once you get that apart, this face plate, face plate just lifts off and you get the exposed inside of the controller. So from here, we want to get to this guide button. We'll go ahead and just take this down a little bit further. This whole section inside of here will lift out. And that will leave you your bottom part. Lay that off to the side. So this is your main board. Unlike a lot of other controllers, this is a little more technical. We have our rumble motors here and the trigger on the bottom. And we have two different PCB boards that stick together. So what we're going to do first, we're going to unsolder the light, or the rumble motors here, and we're just going to zoom this in a little bit. So there's four wires here for the rumble motors. We're going to take those off on each side. Just grab a soldering iron. Go in and pop these off. That's one side. Can't get this other side where you can see it. I drops this rumble motor. The top wires are for your trigger rumbles. The bottom will be for your standard rumbles. Microsoft talked about there being six rumbles in here. So far, I've only counted four. I drop those. This one comes out the bottom. Then you have this PCV board. You'll see. Get a good view here. There's some screws here on the bottom. These are slightly smaller torques. They're not security torques, so get your driver. All of the screws and stuff, we'll just take them out. They're, the big ones hold the shell together, small ones hold the boards in, so can't really mix them up. It's not like when you take apart an iPhone and there's 40 different screws that are about 40 different sizes. 
So here's that first board. There's your thumb thumbsticks on there. So your mic ports here at the bottom. I know we have some people wanting to put in a 2.5 jack. I will let someone do the tracing on that. The mechanisms themselves are a little bit smaller. They're more the uh, closer to the design of what the original PlayStation was, but neither here nor there. So here's this inside board. This is what we want to get to because that's where that guide button's at. So continue just to pull the screws out. Screws are kind of a pain, but it makes for a very solid fill of a controller. Alright, so you get this part out, then you want to pull this board. You're going to pull it up in the back. So pull this part up. Zoom this out a little bit. Let's pull this up, and then pull the whole board back. And that will snap out of there. And here we have the interior PCB board. Kind of see the... And then you'll want to set this off to the side as well. So here we have our interior board. Zoom this in as much as it'll go. I'll work as close as I can up here. And, uh, yeah, that's about all we're going to get. So here's your one LED. Right, it's kind of fuzzy. Right there. So we're just going to take that one out. There's kind of different methods to do this. Normally I use my hot tweezers, but I'm just going to do it the old school way. Take it off. And then grab our new LED. This is a larger size, so the old controllers used an 0603 LED, which is a sixth of a millimeter. These are a little bit larger. They're an 0805, I believe, which will be an eighth of a millimeter. Makes for a little bit brighter shine. Here's a new LED. We're just going to take and solder that back in. If you don't have very steady hand, I probably wouldn't recommend soldering on these. Alright. And then, we just go to put it all back together again. Zoom this out a little bit. So we grab this portion we had before, flip this over. To make this a little bit easier, you can take off a section that goes around the guide button. Pulls right out of there. You guys can see that. And that'll make it a little bit easier to put it back in. So you drop in your first board. Make sure everything's lined up there. At your sync button. Take this and this goes over IR LEDs, they'll kind of snap into place. It's a tight fit, but just shove it in there. There we go. There's kind of a film on the inside for those infrared LEDs. So get that in there. Take your second PCB. And these actually, I didn't show this. There are two clips here to connect. You've got to line those up, make sure they push together firmly. Push those in. Go ahead and put their screws in as well.
get this on here. And this is a trick I learned on the last one. Is to grab you some electrical tape. Take just a little piece of it. Slice it down the middle. Because your rumble motors are going to slide out when you're trying to solder them back in. Run your wires in here. Then just use your tape to go over the motor and kind of brace it in. Doesn't hurt anything, just helps keeping them from falling out when the controller's upside down. I'm gonna do that. And then go solder back in your rumbles. Alright, turn the soldering iron off, grab the bottom of your shell, zoom back out, and you're going to want to line up the battery connections there, they're going to slide into the controller. Push it down on the bottom, pull the triggers in, that'll allow this to sit flush, and that's the bottom half, make sure your wires tuck in from the rumble motors. Put that there. Put your thumbsticks back on. Here's where if you want to put different thumbsticks on, extremely easy. Just drop them in, screw it back together. I'm going to leave the stock ones on for now. I'll be switching to PlayStation sticks. I just have to put in another order to one of my suppliers and get some more coming. I like a certain color. They're not here yet. So, And then just go back in and reassemble And again, make sure you visit my Facebook page and you can see this A and B paddles I put on the bottom. So put your screws back in, then you go snap these back on, they just snap right on. That's there. If you have your play and charge kit, this is what your battery looks like, otherwise it's going to be normal batteries. Slide that in. Battery cover back on. And turn it on. Now I have a blue light in there. I love it. Looks great. Well, guys, this has been fun. If you have any requests, go to my Facebook page, send them out. Maybe I'll try in a video again in the future. Thank you.